Hello everyone, I'm Connor Ashley. I'm Carla Chavez and we are Carla and Connor. The mother-son real estate and design duo. I feel like we've really got that down now. Yeah, After, I like, sure hope we've done years. fucking, yeah, <laughs> 30 videos or something like that. Alrighty, so today we're going to be talking about how to figure out your nightly rate for your short-term rental, whether it be on Airbnb, whatever it is. How do you figure out what to charge? What you're going to charge people. And it really is a um, delicate... <sighs> Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah, yeah. uh, it is a delicate balance because yes. you don't want to price yourself too high or you're going to outprice the market get no bookings. You don't want to price yourself too low because you're going to book up and you won't know if maybe I could have gotten more. <laughs> so it's really important to price yourself right. <laughs> Holy shit. Can you not up. focus on the video? I threw up in my mouth. Shit your pants, <laughs> barf right here, and then drop shit. Alrighty. So anyway, so uh, here are our steps on how to find a nightly rate that works for you. But be sure you smash and subscribe. <laughs> Smash your crab. Very short up to smash your crab. Smash the like button. Yes, sorry, I forgot. And subscribe below. Yes, if you want to watch this video, make sure to keep on watching, but make sure first. Exactly, you smash and subscribe. Smash like button and subscribe to the video. So, step one do your research. Yep. Well, how do you do your research? Well, there's lots of uh, free shit out there where you can find some really good free data. A lot of free stuff. The first one, or the one that we use most of all, is called AirDNA. That's A-I-R-D-N-A. You can create a free account on there. You're not going to have access to all, everything, but the free account will get you enough to get started. So yep. make your free account on there. Essentially, it's going to tell you the average nightly rate of properties in your area, the average occupancy. What the Given the size. Correct. Yep, yep. yep. Uh, given the size, given the um, seasonality, everything like that, and it gives you sort of a base point to work with. Yep, gives you a jumping off point, yes. exactly. You've got to kind of start somewhere, and so that's going to be the very basic level search. You're going to start there. You're also going to want to find your comps. You can do this on AirDNA because it actually lists all these different properties in your area. And links them to Airbnb. And links them to Airbnb, VRBO, wherever they are. Yep. So you can find them that way, but also just search on Airbnb. Yep, yep, exactly. Try and find the same property. If you're going to be listing a single family home that has four bedrooms and two bathrooms. In this city or whatever. Exactly. You search for it. You want to start searching those parameters right in your area so you can get an idea. A, it helps you know what your competition is doing, yeah. how often they're booking out, how much they're charging each night. Yeah. Another good starting point. So you want to take the information from AirDNA as well as those comps and start sort of analyzing those together. And you can sort of figure out their occupancy of your comps by looking at their calendar and the open availability and looking at how many reviews views they have so if you know July if if I guess June is all booked up and we're almost at the end of June and you look on their reviews and they have a ton of reviews for June then you can guess that they're getting booked out pretty nicely whereas if June is all blocked off and there's maybe one night and they have no reviews in June then I might not use that to help you figure out your because occupancy. maybe they're blocking it off because the family is Correct. there during June and yep. they're not actually renting it out so you do have to still take some of this data with a grain of salt now you're going to be constantly adjusting your price even now, after we've been doing this for a very long time, we are constantly adjusting our price. Yep, I literally just said two days ago to Connor that an unusual number of reservations are coming in through another website that uses a different software, and we probably just need to look at that because that to me says that on that particular platform, our we're rates might be a little low because we're getting uh, too many uh, reservations coming in through that one particular spot. Okay, so first, um, you want to make sure that your property is priced less at first. This encourages more bookings, yep. gets you more reviews, gets you higher search rankings. As you start, that's really the best way to yeah. start getting some good reviews under your belt. People are very much price driven and they will book your property even though it doesn't have reviews because it's a good deal, yep. essentially. Now remember um, that during slow season and high season, you're going to be charging different prices and you're going to have to change that. So figure out what your slow season is. For us here in Denver metro area, it's around winter time and our high season is summer. Yep. So figure out what that is for you. You're going to want to charge less in the slow season, high in the high season. Yep. And, and then even within each of those seasons, you look at your days of the week, Thursday through Saturday are generally higher than Sunday through Wednesday. Yep. Um, they're also going to book out a little better. So uh, again, there, there are going to be fluctuations throughout. And we, again, look at our pricing every single week. If 
there's no problems, we still yeah. look at our uh, pricing every single week to make sure that there's no problems and things look good and we're getting the bookings at the rate we need. Yeah without giving it away and make sure that you're checking out what the big events are happening in your area for example here in denver 420 is a very big event here so we make sure months in advance that we're raising those prices very very high to you know make sure we get cap we capitalize on that event coming to town exactly you i mean the hotels do it so yeah. we might as well be doing it as well and now when you're just starting out don't worry about it do it all yourself but once you get a little bit more versed maybe making a little more money you've use, got a few reviews under your belt yes too. a few reviews um you may want to start using a pricing software i really feel like this was one of the best investments we made in ourselves and yeah. our business was using pricing software the nice thing about these is that they use different data points and figure out a lot of different factors into your pricing they look at seasonality availability in the area different events day of the week all these different things to constantly be adjusting your prices and I'm not talking hundred on weekdays 150 on weekends I'm talking they're changing it to hundred and two dollars on Monday hundred and five dollars on Wednesday like they know it down to the day yep. so it's gonna cost you a little bit of a percentage but it's gonna be a great return on investment because you'll be able to really capitalize on those high number days yeah and, and it, it was just to the point like Connor said such these slight variations that we would never know we really only know you know know that Monday through Wednesday are lower and Thursday through Saturday are okay. higher we know that you know November through February are lower and April through September are higher, higher. but yeah. that's about as you know wide as we ourselves could do and when I still am getting maybe I priced normally mm, when I open my unit 75 let's just say one you know one bedroom unit $75 a night this pricing software pushed it up to $88 a night how would I have ever come to $88 like yeah. I wouldn't have done that on my Not own at all. and so and times amount multiple nights and you see how that can add up real quick now one thing with these pricing softwares is you, is you are gonna have to put in a minimum price and a base price this sort of helps them gauge what we're looking at they don't want to mark your place you know five hundred dollars above what you think it's worth they want to keep it in the realm of real reality yep. for your property and oftentimes after a couple of weeks they actually give you what's called base price help so they will help you saying hey for your size property in the we same think. area we think that this is what you should do and this is what other properties are priced at in your area oh, similar comparison that they're doing exactly now one thing to stay away from when you are starting out is to avoid using the airbnb smart pricing why what do you mean why like a segue segue <laughs> Oh Airbnb wants your property to be rented every single night through Airbnb. That's why. I guess I'm making him a little hot. Um, that's why you don't want to use it. They're, they, they, they're biased. I mean, they have a they have they're biased a, towards their platform. Yep, and they have a stake in your property, and they want it. And they 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 know they're not stupid that you're probably listed on other properties, so they on other platforms, so they want to get it as low as possible, so it books on Airbnb first. And they don't. <laughs> Jeff, Jesus Christ. <laughs> 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 Um, but yes, exactly. They don't care how much you get. They want you to get booked up 100% of the time at low rates. They don't really care because they get a percentage either way. And they're getting a percentage whether you're booked 10% of the time or 100%. And they're getting a hell of a lot more money if you're booked 100% of the exactly. time. So they're going to price you down low so that they can get their percentage and get, book, get you booked 100% of the time. Yep. So be wary of that. Tool. And some of them, I think um, some of the other platforms have a pricing tool like that, but you want to, again, avoid that. Use an independent third party that doesn't really have a stake in your business one way or the other. And honestly, when you're starting out, if it's just you, you're going to do a better job than the smart pricing if you're looking at AirDNA and uh, Doing following your, your comps. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So the next step would be figure out um, your goals. Every host has their own set of goals and it's not necessarily gonna look the same from one host to another. Yeah, so what are your goal, your girls, your goals? <laughs> what are your girls? <laughs> uh, what are your goals? Do you wanna get booked out um, 
all of the time and increase your SEO and increase your reviews and you know increase your visibility on these platforms. But if you're getting booked out all the time, you're going to be cleaning all the time. Yep. Or do you want to just have less bookings at higher prices that are longer stays, um, you know, so that you can do less turnovers? Less turnovers. This is something that you need to figure out for yourself. Uh, figure out the goals of your property, and that's going to adjust your pricing. Yep. And that might change too, depending on the property as yes. well. There's some properties that are really not designed to turn as frequently as some other properties. They're just more intense, whatever the case may be. Yeah. But you know, again, based on you and your availability and your model and what you need to do, and then your property, mesh those two together and figure out what your goals are. Now, the next one is adjusting your cleaning fee. I don't think a lot of people realize that, but when people are searching for a property, what they don't give you the breakdown when people are searching. So it doesn't say $99 a night plus an $85 cleaning fee plus taxes and services. Guess what? They lump it all together when they're just scrolling through. So if you have a huge cleaning fee, it gets put into that nightly rate. So if it's one person coming for one night, instead of it saying $100 nightly rate plus $100 cleaning fee, it's going to say $200 period. People are reasonable and they understand that you need to hire a cleaner and they need to pay a cleaning fee. But when they see that nightly rate at $200, they're like, you're crazy. Yeah. They're not going to, uh, they're just going to move on to another listing is what they do. Yes. <laughs> so make sure that you are adjusting your cleaning fee. One thing that we are lucky enough to do is we have a cleaner who works for us and we pay our cleaners a set amount all the time. So we're able to have some flexibility in our cleaning fees. And we actually lower our cleaning fees because we want to get booked more often. We our want... goal is to have higher occupancy. We yes. like having higher occupancy, more turnovers because yeah. more turnovers means more cleaning fees, which often means, which means more reviews, which means better SEO, which means better visibility on all of these sites. Now, since we're charging low for our cleaning fee, you know, we can sometimes make a little bit of a profit on the cleaning fee, but it's not all the time. And that's not why we're doing it. We're doing it to increase our occupancy. Absolutely. So don't be afraid to change your cleaning fee. Matt, um, play around with it yes. a little bit just to see what works. But one of the, the most important things I think that Connor brought out at one point was when somebody is looking for just one night, what is your nightly price look like to that one night stay person? And if it's extremely high, you're going to get overlooked a lot of the time. And so it is a balance and you really do have to kind of play with it. We understand you've got to cover those expenses. Yeah but you also are going to have to understand that you might get overlooked at some times if you have too high of a cleaning And fee. those one night bookings are a huge business in the short term rental world. You think that people are coming for five days? No, the majority of our business are single bookings for one night. Yep. And they're actually easy to turn over easy. oftentimes. They're really very, sometimes they never even shower. They literally just come late at night, sleep there, and then leave early in the morning for their flight and they almost touch nothing. So oftentimes they're very easy to clean up anyway. So don't discount those types of reservations. Remember, if you have an exorbitant cleaning fee, it's going to be less appealing for those people who are staying for one or two nights and more appealing for people who are staying for seven nights. So just remember, figure out your goals and what you want to accomplish and then adjust the cleaning fee to match that. And I think all the while you're constantly keeping an eye on all of these things. So yes. each week you're looking at that base price on the pricing software. Always. Each week you're checking that seat, that floor price, making sure that's where it is, playing around with that cleaning I mean, it's just, it's not set and forget. Um, you it really have to be actively involved with your pricing to make sure you're maximizing your profits, yet maximizing your occupancy as well. It yes. is really a delicate dance. One more thing I wanted to say about the pricing oh, software. Yeah. Um, most of them that we're going to post down here for you offer a free 30 day trial. Oh, yes. And it's a great way just to try it and see how it goes. They give you a full 30 days. You can kind of get in there and see what it looks like, see how easy or hard it is to use and, and then yeah. get in there and set some pricing and then you'll start to get some reservations with it at no charge. And here's what I would do if you're smart. They all have 30 day free trials and there's, I don't know, probably like four or five yep. big ones. Guess what? Wait until your high season yep. and get all those free trials right in a row and you're going to make a lot of damn money in your high season. And I would uh, encourage you to take notes each month. Okay. Yes. This one did this. This one did this. I liked this. I didn't like that. So at the end of that term, you can say, I really liked the way this pricing software 
did whatever. And not each one is gonna work for your area. You need to pick the one that knows your area best, really. Yeah. It depends on the area. So, I mean, some of them aren't even available in certain areas. Yeah. So just make sure when you're looking down there, check that out. Um, and it'll be a great investment for you. Yeah, it really will be. Overall, really, it's be flexible, be nimble. It's not something, again, that you can set and forget. It's yep. you're always looking at it. You're always moving it. You're constantly looking at uh, anomalies that may occur. Like I yep. said the other day, we saw an unusual number of reservations coming in through this one platform. And I thought, hmm, wonder if the pricing is off there. Because all of a sudden, it was just crazy busy with this one spot. And, um, and one thing that I actually do, and maybe it's a little bit excessive, but what I do is at the end of about maybe like two or three times a week, I will look at the occupancy rates for the next month and I will document those. How many days am I missing? How many days are my booked? And I will uh, sort of go back in time and reference those to past months, past years, different things like that. So I actually have in my notes months and months and months. So for, I know for June 14th, I had 80 days available left in July. Well, last year I only had 70 days available left in July. So is there something wrong with my pricing? Is the competition growing year by year? So I need to be more competitive with my pricing. So if you're keeping good data points, then you can reference those back. And that's just something I do to help with the pricing. Yeah, well, and it's truly the way to run a business, data-driven decisions, basically. Well, there you go, guys. That's about it. Uh, we hope you we helped you with uh, figuring out the nightly price for your short-term rental. Um, yeah, we love helping you out. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, check out our podcast where? On Apple Podcasts. It's called Vacant to Vacation. Yeah. And make sure to like this video and subscribe to us on YouTube. You can comment down below if you have any questions or hit us up on our social media app, Carla and Connor. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, guys. Bye. Take care. And I'm Connor Ashley. And I'm Carla Chas. We're the mother-son real estate and design duo. We are here to help you invest in properties. Now, you can make a lot of money doing this. We're your people. <laughs> <laughs>